Hey there YouTube, I'm Kitsu, this is the Kitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome to a little bit of Age of Wonders Planetfall. So today I want to talk a little bit about the combination for the different factions and the different um, secret te technologies, and I'm going to go pretty in depth into each of these, so we'll do a video for I think for each of them. But in any event, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Vanguard Synthesis, since that's what I just finished playing as. Um, this is a faction I think that works really really well together. I think that uh, you're looking at either two different ways of playing these. So this is the commander that I produced here, uh, Synthesis Vanguard. Uh, you're either going to be going for ones where you want your um, secret technology to uh, mesh really really well with your core faction here, and I think that the Vanguard Synthesis does mesh really really well together. Uh, or you're going to look for ways to make it so that uh, the secret technology covers up weakness for your faction there. And in this particular case, I don't think that Synthesis really covers any weaknesses of the Vanguard. Uh, theoretically, you could use Synthesis to cover for a weakness against mech units that uh, Vanguard might have, but they're not technically weak against them, and they have got some pretty strong options against mechanical units. So I don't think that that's really what you're doing in this particular case. Um, that being said though, uh, I think that Vanguard Synthesis is one of those situations where you're not necessarily looking too heavily towards leaning into uh, Synthesis Vanguard to combine them together. What you're really doing here is finding a situation where you can use Synthesis as it is, because I think that out of all the secret technologies, it's one of the most versatile and powerful out there, so long as you know what you're doing. Um, it's an economy-focused one in certain respects there, um, and I'll show you what we mean by that once we uh, take a look at a game file here. So in any event here, let's go ahead and load up a game that we just uh, played here. And now the big reason that I would say that this is a uh, technology-based um, faction and the reason that I had Merchant uh, for it is because you really want to be pumping out lots and lots of armies, and this is what you're going to be doing with virtually any faction. But I think that's especially the case with Synthesis. Let's take a look at one Operation of the things that we've got available here. So one of my active, uh, two of my active things here uh, are the Society 2.0 ability and Worker Integration. Um, these are both things that come from Synthesis. So that Worker Integration gives us plus two and plus two uh, to our energy and engineering. This means we build units faster and we produce more energy, and this lets you churn out units way, way faster. Now, unlike most uh, strategy or uh, 4X type games, energy is probably the most important uh, commodity in this game. Um, unlike production. Uh, production is still important for producing those units really quickly, but if we take a look here, we notice that we pay energy just to build units, not to fast build them. We can also click this to fast build a unit there, but we need to spend this energy uh, to just say that we want to build something, um, which is pretty rare for this type of genre of game. In addition to that, we're also paying a decent amount in upkeep here. 289 of our energy is going to that unit upkeep. So the fact that we're still earning almost 600 energy after all of that is kind of crazy. That's enough for me to fast buy this unit uh, instantly. And I don't just mean like fast buy this unit that's already uh, mostly done. I mean that we could fast buy a brand new one um, if we had that option as well. So this is just the way that you sort of want to be playing the game if you want to overwhelm the opponent in mass numbers. Um, you'll see that we've got a big army stack over here. We got two little army stacks, or well, one big one, one little one over here. Actually, two big ones. Um, we've got uh, a, a single army stack over here, essentially. Uh, we've got... How many army stacks do we have over here? Uh, I think there should be one around here. Yep, there's an army stack over here. Uh, there's an army stack down here, and there's an army stack down here. And I think we've got another two over here, one small one, one full one. And then again, we've got like one full army stack, two full army stacks practically over here. So that's a lot of armies, and a lot of these were produced uh, fairly cheaply. We got a bunch of them through influence, but we also got a bunch of them through uh, paying for units. And also a lot of the cheaper units I've been sacrificing as the game has gone on. Uh, that is to say units that don't have any cosmite cost. This is the other resource that you need to take into consideration when you're building, uh, building your armies. Um, Generally speaking, I've been able to build one of my good units per turn here, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, playing as the uh, synthesis, you can build something called a network link. This is a very, very powerful unit. Um, the mods and upgrades that I've given mine mean that they cost 31 Cosmite each, which means I can just barely build one per turn, and I've only very recently gotten the ability to get 31 Cosmite per turn. So. Um, 
generally speaking, I think that uh, the fact that you're able to get to this uh, level of economy is what's sort of important there. Other than that though, we also can take a look at the other side of things. So for Vanguard, we're using Colony Militia and Hearts and Mines. So Hearts and Mines was what gave us uh, a bunch of uh, the ability to pull colonies into us a little bit faster, but it also gains extra uh, influence from completing quests there. We've also got the, the Emissary, which gives us even more influence from, from completing quests, which is why we've got so much influence right now, as well as uh, so many units that are gained from influence. But more importantly, there's the Vanguard tech over here, Colony Militia, which gives us the ability to produce units way, way faster. Um, this means that if you're playing as Vanguard Synthesis, you're really on your way to just building massive stacks of cheap units. A lot of my cheap units are dead right now, but uh, they do help a ton in, help, uh, in just overwhelming your opponents. Uh, and that's kind of what you're really looking to do, is you're trying to build a swarm of armies that can just surround a settlement and then sack it, uh, and then still have the ability to integrate that quickly while moving on to the next one and next one and next one and next one. Um, and you do this really, really well with the Vanguard Synthesis combination there. Uh, the other thing that you want to consider is uh, Doctrine Costs. Looking at these, these all cost energy, and again, that is really what the focus is going to be here. Now, other things that really helps, um, Frontier Survival was something that was tremendously important, and that is a Vanguard technology, plus 15 food production in all of our colonies. This was one of the things that I used early game to kickstart our production. I disabled it later because we didn't really need it anymore once we got to these higher tier cities that were capable of producing way more resources. But in the early game, having this in like your fifth or sixth or whatever turn, um, after you've picked up some science uh, goodies or whatever, this is going to be a massive increase to your uh, food production. So that's going to kickstart you into getting um, further along a little bit faster. Um, because you don't start off with the ability to produce huge amounts of energy. That's going to be late, late, late into the game there. Um, so anyway, let's take a quick look at other units that are kind of interesting that synergize well with... Oops, this is the wrong, wrong tab. I never use this stupid thing. Um, this one. Actually, let's do it the other way here. Let's go to one of our blanket cities here that has nothing interesting. We want to specifically go for one with nothing interesting if I can help it. That has something interesting. Because um, some of these places change our base stats. This should actually be fine because it just increases our... Um, right, well, I just remembered something. Okay, never mind. Uh, Alright, so we'll have to do it from here. So ignore some of these stats on these units here. They're wrong. Uh, so if we take a look at this, it has five armor. That's wrong. This unit has one armor. Um, four of it is coming from uh, tile improvements in the city. Uh, if I went and built them in a different city, they would have a different armor value. So anyway, um, for the starting unit here, this doesn't synergize amazingly with um, the synthesis, but the thing is that if you've got a strong unit, it can be made really strong really early with synthesis. Um, you've got two mods in particular that you can get right off the bat there, or fairly quickly anyway, and that's the Guardian Demon Shell and the Targeting Demon Shell. Um, Mixing and matching your units so that they've got one or both of these or whichever you decide you're going to take can dramatically improve the performance of your early game units. And if you have a fairly decent one like the Vanguard Assault Trooper here, uh, in particular like the Guardian Demon Shell, I think this is pretty useful in a lot of different types of units. They're 20% harder to hit by ranged attacks there. Um, and integrating you makes it so that these guys are capable of uh, absorbing quite a lot of shots before they go down. Um, plus one armor also helps a tiny bit there, but for the most part, you're looking at the fact that these units become much harder to hit, uh, especially if you put them in cover, which is where they want to be anyway. They're going to be a pretty uh, powerful unit in the first few turns. Um, same thing with the targeting demon shell, plus 10% accuracy, plus 10% critical hit, um, as well as the extra damage means that this unit becomes pretty potent pretty fast. Uh, honestly speaking though, I generally like to upgrade these guys with things like the rail accelerators. Um, and in this particular case, we've managed to find more powerful things like combat protocol implants um, and other things. So it's going to depend on what else you can find. You're not always going to have access to combat protocol implants. You're certainly not going to always have access to smart rounds. Uh, those are very, very powerful things. But um, this unit here can definitely make do. I think that might one of my favorite combinations early game is something like Guardian Demon Shell, Nanite Injectors targeting Demon Shell if I wanted to go for a very upgraded version of this unit here very quickly for fairly cheap. Um, and cheap matters quite a bit. You're In the early game, you're not going to have a lot of Cosmite. You're not going to have the ability to produce very many elite units. 
Um, but if you get one that's gaining experience points pretty quickly there, you can slap those on him. He's going to be very, very hard to kill. He's going to be really tanky. Um, if he ends up in a tight spot and loses a few hit points, you can use the Nanite Injectors to get him back up in health and make him much more durable as well. And he's going to be able to dish out a decent amount of damage thanks to the targeting Demon Shell. Um, if you want to, you can also sort of skip that and go straight for the Rail Accelerators, which is what I like to do but it's still a uh, pretty powerful thing here. Being able to stack that with the targeting demon shell could also make you a very powerful offense oriented unit early on, and then slapping on even something like the fleshette rounds, um, just going through those three techs there, or even the electrified rounds, going for those three makes it so that this unit's immediately really, really powerful at uh, dealing damage, even though it's pretty fragile still. So there's lots of different ways that you could sort of utilize those mods that work well with the Vanguard based troop there. Um, other things to note there, the Engineer. Uh, the Engineer is going to be not using necessarily those mods, but what the Engineer has is the ability to uh, put down extra units once per battle. And these units are pretty powerful, the Guardian, uh, the Engineer turret there. This actually has the wrong abilities, this should be using um, something more like, uh, I'm going to say the Rail Accelerators here. So let's say this uh, composition here, you're capable of creating a missile turret, you're capable of creating your gun turret, standard, um, you're capable of creating the fire burst ammunition, uh, so your turrets, uh, your stuff actually deals a bunch of extra area of effect damage and cause uh, burning. Um, they deal a lot of extra damage, they've got extra range, they've got extra accuracy. All this combined makes these uh, things really, really powerful. And once you've used that, you can also reset that with a pug. Now the reason that Synthesis is stronger with the Vanguard Engineer and why you're going to want to potentially focus on that, I didn't in this particular game, um, is the Network Link. Unlike the Pug, the Network Link is actually a, a much, much stronger reset ability. Uh, the Upload AC data is capable of uh, resetting your once per battle abilities, but also once you've used Upload AC data, it actually turns into Download AC data, and that's not listed here. Download AC data lets you consume a fairly distant, I think it's the range is 7, um, may, might even be a bit further, um, organic unit, so a biological unit, a, an infantry, a monster, animal, a uh, cyborg, any of those sorts of units can be consumed by the network uh, link, and once it's done that, it regains upload AC data. And what's special about this is you can march forward with, say, three engineers, drop down your turrets, and on turn two, you can drop down the missile turrets. Um, and at that point in time, you reset the engineers using the upload AC data. The uh, engineers keep putting down more turrets and then more of the missile turrets, and hopefully by then you've killed something. And if you've killed a couple of units, you can then march your network links forward, grab those corpses, use them for upload AC data again, drop down more turrets, and you can just continue doing this over and over again. Um, I didn't do this in this particular one, I just created a much more generic unit here using the deployable malware demon uh, with the guardian demon shell and the, the targeting demon shell, but the engineer combo does come online much faster because you can just have them use the regular gun turret um, early on there. Um, it's a very very powerful sort of mix and I think that it's one that you would want to keep in mind when you're using the vanguard and the uh, synthesis combination. Um, other units that you would consider vanguard gunships actually are pretty viable uh, when you're playing as the Vanguard uh, Synthesis combination there, thanks to the Guardian, Guardian Demon Shell. 20% harder to hit by range attacks is a massive bonus there. Um, the only problem with it is that it only applies to range attacks, so if you're getting hit by melee attacks, uh, you don't really get much benefit at all from the Guardian Demon Shell, and there's lots of things in this game that prefer melee. But melee can't be used to use, attack air units, so these units are capable of taking that 20% harder hit by range attacks and just laughing while dancing circles around uh, ground-based melee units. Um, you could then also add something like the improved combat sensors, bringing you up to 35%, and with evasive maneuvers, these guys can actually just run around the map in circles um, and then go into defensive stance if they want to uh, and end up with almost 100% dodge chance which makes it really, really hard to take these guys down. Um, I would say that you would, after that, need some form of extra damage on these guys here. Um, and that side of things is going to be more from something like, say, the maybe kinetic phase modulator under normal circumstances or smart rounds in this particular case. 
Even with these, you're not going to be dealing a ton of damage. The aircraft gun here only goes up to 10 damage in that case. You could use electrified ammunition if you need arc there, but um, generally speaking, this is going to end up being a fairly low damage unit. But um, what you can also do is have it run around, use the buster missile over and over again as well, because that's a thing that you can do. <laughs> Just circle and then buster missile, circle, buster missile, circle, buster missile. It does have the two turn cooldown, but since your units are practically immune to damage from the enemy, um, you can definitely make use of that. And this is just a really, really powerful combination there. Unfortunately, this unit does also have a uh, Cosmite cost, and Cosmite is something that you want to really save access to. So uh, the next unit that we've got here, the Vanguard Assault Bike, I don't like this unit just in general there, but if you were going to use this, um, you could definitely use something like, say, um, the total network integration, so that once you've run the bike into the middle of the enemy, so that you can use the wide field, phase, uh, field laser array, this unit will immediately get, get ganged up on and destroyed. Um, so you could have the total network integration on this so it comes back to life after it dies that way. Um, sequential kill system is also a powerful vanguard mod, so you could do it potentially twice, um, where you wide field uh, laser array and then you wide field laser array if you killed someone on that first one, and then your unit gets murdered, and then you bring it back to life, and then it uh, wide field laser arrays, and then wide field laser arrays. Um, that's just with two pretty powerful mods there. There are other ways to do something similar to this, but I mean, that, that is something you could do if your opponent has really bunched up together and has got lots of low power uh, things that you can easily kill off with this guy, but I wouldn't really put my money on it necessarily. Also, this unit uses lasers, and I don't uh, generally upgrade my lasers as much as I upgrade my kinetics. Next up is the uh, laser tank, and even though I don't upgrade lasers, this is still a pretty fantastic unit. Uh, the reason that you would combine this with the um, with synthesis is again really powerful to add the total network integration to it. It makes it quite durable against a lot of different types of uh, enemies there. Um, I think that this is just an all-around really amazing mod. It's one that you're going to put down on a lot of uh, your high-tier elite units there. The ability to have it come back and back to life pretty much every battle uh, is, is just really, really good. Um, putting on these tanks, which are already sort of there to um, soak up a lot of damage and a lot of hits there, uh, is something useful in its own right there. But also the fact that these laser tanks um, are capable of dishing out pretty okay damage even without modules means that you're going to get a lot of uh, mileage out of these guys. Next up, we've got the uh, Synthesis Unique units there. So the Vanguard Hacker here um, is actually a little bit superior in some respects to the uh, base troop for the soldier. And the only problem is that they sort of have overlapping roles, and I'd say the Vanguard Soldier, even though it's a little bit weaker, is a little bit better at its job there. The reason is that this guy does not have kinetic-type weapons, he has an arc-type weapon. And that means that I cannot make him have range 8, which is kind of what I really like having. Uh, personally speaking, if we take a look at our trooper here, they've got access to the rail accelerators, the total network integration, and in this case smart rounds, although if we didn't have access to smart rounds, we would be using the kinetic phase modulators, which are pretty similar. Um, in some ways the phase modulator is actually better, but that's besides the point. Um, so the Vanguard Hacker uh, is better if they're able to get in close and fire their shots because they've got higher base damage, they've got a little bit more shielding. Um, their grenade's a little bit better in some respects than the um, than the standard troop there. And when these guys fully upgrade, they also gain the ability to bypass cover, uh, which is exactly what those mods were for that other faction, or for that other unit. The problem is that that other unit has access to Overwatch, this unit does not. And that's a really, really important and powerful ability. There's lots of units that will set themselves, walk up forward to you, hit defensive stance, have a ton of extra defense because of that, and be virtually really, really hard to kill. Um, they'll also have like skitter, which means that they gained evasion for every tile that they moved, or evasive, which means they gained a little bit of extra evasion for every tile they moved. If you move your units up so that they will uh, have that unit in Overwatch, if that unit tries to move, they don't gain any of those bonuses from defensive stance or from skitter, or from evasive, or potentially even from cover, depending on how they're doing it. Which means that having Overwatch is a really important tool for defeating those kinds of units, and these guys can't do that. Um, they're, they make up for that, though, in the fact that their uh, damage is higher. It's a little bit of a different type there, and they're just a little bit of a tougher unit. So the reason that I use these guys in the late game is that they're a pretty good disposable unit without any modifications. Just don't add anything to them and throw them into the front line. I've lost mostly this type of unit. This is the unit that's mostly been getting killed in this game. Um, very few of them, if any, got to the prime rank. 
Um, you're, the reason that they're like this for this faction, like these guys are actually really, really powerful if you're playing as other factions. The reason they're not very good for Vanguard is that Vanguard just has a superior option for the role, um, in my opinion there. Um, whereas if I was playing as someone like the Devar, these guys become much, much more viable because the, um, well, for one thing, they, they swap out the grenade with a slightly longer range shotgun blast type thing that travels across multiple units there. It's debatable which is more powerful. The shrapnel virus, if you can use it, is more powerful um, in that it causes bleeding. It's a different damage type, which is a, a good idea to have on this type of unit there. But it's shorter range and it deals less damage. Um, so it's depending, dependent on what the sort of situation is. Now, the other thing that you could do with these guys, though, if you really wanted to, these guys are quite good with jetpacks. Uh, if you plop a jetpack on a unit of Vanguard hackers, they're capable of uh, having one unit come in, compromise a bunch of enemies using a shrapnel grenade there, and then you can uh, have the rest of them come in with the Hasher SMGs to fin uh, finish them off, thin them out there. And this isn't an overly expensive sort of combination there. Um, in addition to that, you can add in a few uh, Vanguard-specific uh, mods here, like the sequential sis kill system. Nanite injectors are amazing early game, uh, just for their ability to defend a unit like this, especially a unit like these guys, since they will be assaulting close in without the ability to defensively overwatch. These guys are probably going to want to move uh, fairly up close to the enemy to use their grenades and stuff like that. The nanite injectors become quite powerful on them. Um, so that's a combination I would consider using for these guys if I didn't think that the Vanguard uh, Soldier was a slightly better unit for the role. Uh, next up we got the Network Link. Um, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier. This guy is just the best all-around unit, I would say. Um, its heal is much stronger than the Pugs. Um, it says it can only be used once for battle, but again, we can re uh, redo those thanks to the upload AC datas. Uh, and then you've got access to data integrity enforcement. Now, what's interesting about this one is that it's uh, the reset safe state demon. This is a this is a demon. Um, you can have the heal last indefinitely if you're using data integrity enforcement. So this one also just comes off cooldown, so if you have at least two of these guys, you can have reset safe state demon last forever, and you can keep putting it so that it's got you've got like 33% regeneration on every single unit that you have. This is an incredibly powerful mod uh, ability combination there. And that's on top of a unit that already has actually a better attack than your basic troop here. Uh, if we take a look at these guys, they've got 9 attack, that guy has 10. Um, it's got a little bit more uh, uh, shielding and armor there. It's got two armor and one shield as the base numbers there. Um, so this thing ends up being incredibly good at its job as well as being able to actually strike pretty hard. You can mod this guy to be a gun unit just like you would for the uh, Vanguard Soldier, and they'll do the f they'll do fine. They'll be capable of doing that just fine. Um, Lastly, you've got the Avatar. This is the unit that I think is probably one of the weaker ones. What's nice about this is that it's a large tier 3 that's actually not large. This unit is capable of taking cover and does not have the 15% bonus against it to hit, meaning that this thing can actually be really tanky in a way that a lot of other similar units cannot be. Um, in addition, its weapon is a shotgun type thing. The only problem I have with it is that despite the fact that it's really tanky, um, it's not actually that damaging. So it's capable of running up behind some cover, hitting um, hyper armor, having a bunch of mods on it to make it more survivable. And it'll probably survive whatever the enemy throws at it, but uh, the tank can do a similar sort of thing, rumble up to the front there, be really, really hard to kill, and also lay down enough firepower to really sort of justify that. There are instances where disruption virus and overload virus will actually be really, really powerful, um, especially overload virus. If you keep repeating the uh, stun effect, if you keep refilling uh, the stun, you can use this over and over and over again and just keep people uh, completely locked out of combat. Uh, the odd of it is pretty low, but it's still pretty okay. Um, that's really all I can say about this unit, though. It's not that great. Override Demon uh, can be situationally really powerful, but uh, there are other things that this faction can do to get access to that. Uh, Amplify Demon is probably one of the stronger things that they've got access to. Plus 25% damage, one level of impact resistance, and fast movement. Um, it's a pretty powerful effect that you're capable of doing, and since you can uh, use this buff and then amplify the duration using network links, it can be pretty effective, and I have definitely seen that be uh, useful there. What I mostly use these guys though ultimately for is to get into the front of the enemy there and uh, get in their way and defend and be really spongy, really tanky, while still being able to use cover, which uh, tanks can't do. So. Uh, that's sort of what we're looking at for the faction here. The way I would say that you're supposed to synergize these guys together there um, 
definitely use the uh, early game abilities and uh, um, mods that you're capable of getting from the Vanguard. Combine their solid troops with some of those more, more powerful effects that you're capable of getting from Synthesis. Use uh, your economy boosts there to get a huge amount of production and energy. And you're going to be using that production and energy not only to produce tons of units there, but you're also going to be using it to prime lots and lots of uh, things from your arsenal here. Um, operations here. In battle, like just dropping down tons of these operations is going to be pretty commonplace. If you're up against a lot of mech, Disruption Virus Pulse, tremendously, tremendously useful. Uh, if you're up against a situation where you're in a shooting matchup there, Kinetic Vectoring Field can be very, very powerful. That's a Vanguard one there. Um, actually, no, that one's, uh, that one's Firearm. Uh, Deploy Valkyrie is pretty good there, especially if you're trying to use lots of... Um, cloned units there this can give you enough time to like clone an extra wave of like um uh, turrets or other demons or something like that there uh in the back line there so this thing's just a great distraction there uh, motion control hack can basically just completely shut down a tank push or something like that uh skirmisher subroutines can be really really powerful on the blitz and stuff like that so you're going to want to be using these pretty much every turn that you're getting in fights there just because of how powerful they are Doctrines, same sort of thing there. You're really going to go after the worker integration. Extremely, extremely powerful. Plus two production and plus two um, energy per person. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it really is. It's a ton of extra cash there. So anyway, uh, that is going to be our video for today. Um, I'm going to be also putting out the entire playthrough pretty much all at once there since we did finish the campaign here using this uh, strategy. So that's something you guys can also check out there. Anyway, I hope you found this video enjoyable, and of course, as always, I hope to see you guys all next time.